method of images according to method of images we first consider a charge configuration that is situated above a perfect conducting plane having potential zero so according to method of images we the charge configuration the given charge configuration can be replaced by its image and the conducting plane is replaced by eq potential surface so in this case we consider a line charge and that line charge is situated above a conducting plane here we consider a conducting plane situated at z equals to 0 and the line charge rho l is situated on x equals to 0 plane that is y z plane at a height of h. So according to method of images that line charge density rho l has the image below the conducting plane that is minus rho l. The coordinates of rho l is 0, y, h and the coordinates of its image is 0, y and minus h. So this is a charge configuration with the help of method of images. And now our task is to determine the electric field at point P. So, the electric field at point P, P has a distance vector rho 1 with respect to rho L and distance vector rho 2 with respect to minus rho L. So, here we take a care of rho L and rho. Here rho L is a line charge density while rho is a distance vector ok so the electric field at point p due to rho l and minus rho l that is image line charge density so we know that the electric field due to line charge density is rho l upon 2 pi epsilon naught rho unit vector rho and unit vector rho is equals to vector upon its magnitude so formula becomes rho l vector rho upon 2 pi epsilon naught rho square. So accordingly we apply for line charge density rho l and minus rho l that is its image. So accordingly we get this equation. Now the distance vector rho 1 and rho 2 having a coordinates x0 z minus h and x0 z plus h respectively this is obtained from the figure so after putting these values we get a electric field e due to line charge density rho l with the help of method of images now again we see that at z equals to 0 that is on the conducting plane the electric field has only z component because here the x component is cancelled due to this negative sign and at z equals to 0 h is remaining here minus h and here is also minus h that is of z component and this that is minus 2 h 2 2 is cancelled here so at z equals to 0 the electric field is equals to minus rho l h upon pi x square plus h square so in this way we can determine the electric field so with the help of electric field e we can also determine the potential at point p so we know that v equals to minus e dot dl here we consider a cylindrical coordinate system that's why we use rho 1 vector and rho 2 vector. Here rho 1 and rho 2 are the distance vector while rho l is 
a line chart density this must be clear so accordingly potential is equals to minus e dot dl so in cylindrical coordinate system dl vector is equals to d rho e rho plus rho d phi e phi plus dz az so this is considered for both rho 1 and rho 2 vector now since electric field has only unit vector rho so the dot product has again only have rho component pi and z component are cancelled zero we get only rho component so after that after the dot product we get this term and here there is a integration with respect to rho only so we take a constant term common and integrate with respect to rho 1 and rho 2 respectively we get the potential v that is equals to minus rho l upon 2 pi epsilon naught natural log ln rho 1 upon rho 2 here rho 1 and rho 2 are the magnitude of this vector rho 1 and rho 2 so the magnitude of rho 1 is under root x square plus z minus h whole square while the distance rho 2 is equals to x square plus z plus h square so in this way we can determine the potential v so with the help of electric field we can also determine the surface charge induced on the conducting plane that is situated at z equals to 0 and we know that at z equals to 0 the electric field has only normal component that is only z component so the surface char charge density rho s is equals to dn dn is the normal component of electric flux density and we know that d equals to epsilon naught e and here e has only z component so accordingly we put the value of e at z equals to 0 epsilon naught is cancelled so in this way we can determine the surface charge induced on the conducting plane now the induced charge per length with respect to length of the conducting plane here we for see from the figure that the conducting plane is situated at z equals to 0 and we have to determine the induced charge with respect to length of this conducting plane and from formula of surface charge rho s we have a term that is minus rho l h upon pi x square plus h square here h is constant that is height of the line chart density and here the variable is x means we have to determine the induced charge per length that is with respect to x so to get uh, induced charge per length we have to integrate the surface charge density with respect to x so it is rho s into dx so after putting this value rho s and integrate with respect to x so from figure that is with respect to unit length we see that alpha angle that is tan alpha is equals to h upon x that is perpendicular upon base so we assume that tan alpha equals to h upon x and here x equals to h tan alpha so differentiate dx equals to h sec square alpha d alpha so in place of dx we can put h sec square alpha d alpha so after putting this and in place of x we can write h tan alpha and the limits 
the first is the limit of x and it is changed to alpha limit. Here alpha is the angle that is from minus pi by 2 say pi by 2. This is from here. When x equals to minus infinity, alpha equals to minus pi by 2. And when x equals to plus infinity, alpha equals to plus pi by 2. Here alpha is equals to tan inverse h upon x. So, after putting these values and calculating the integration with respect to alpha, we find that the induced charge per length with respect to x direction is equals to minus rho l. Means, it is expected that the line charge density rho l has an image that is minus rho l when the conducting plane is removed.